if you want to play the intro. It's he really <laughs> he really hits some slurs right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Even Matt Damon too. Yeah, like it's really quick. They love it. I do love Jack Nicholas and like just right off the bat, just hearing his voice. It's I wish scary. it was Jack Nicholas. <laughs> Jack Nicholson is the man you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say yeah. Jack Nicholas? Yeah. If it was, if it was the Golden this, Bear, I always do. I that. thought he said Jack Nicholas' son. Like I thought he just said both of them right there. <laughs> I, I felt that. shitty calling you out, but it is pretty funny to think of the old man <laughs> just out there blasting ends. <laughs> I bet he says it all the time on the golf course. Uh, I yeah. bet he was not stoked on Tiger. I didn't feel like it was the first time Jack had ever said it either. No, for sure not. He said I think very, he ripped this. He said it very comfortably. <laughs> yeah, he was off book for that. I heard some interview. Well, I, you guys lead. It's your podcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, go, no, go no. ahead. <laughs> well, there's the scene in here where he, uh, it's like really early too, where he shoots the person in the back of the head on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, I, th- I don't know what it was on, but he said that he like, they let him just kind of like riff. So he like said all those lines about like uh, whatever it is where it's like you got to see you got to like get help or whatever that his his like number one hitman calls him out because he's like so grotesque and I just wish I knew like all the lines that they let him just kind of <laughs> say you know when they let him go off book. Oh man, I love that line too when he's just like fuck she fell funny. Exactly, that's and his then line. He starts laughing. Yeah, yeah. And as a comedian, I was like that sucks like mm-hmm. the last thing she ever does she gets a laugh like yeah. that's how i want to go out oh man. yeah like that guy just had it i'd love to go down just in the mud on a beach i'd love for the fucking ocean to take me <laughs> for real i think that'd be a good way to go it'd be really scary but then it's an epic story oh you're alive when the ocean takes yeah you. yeah like because i love the ocean and if the ocean just like <laughs> swallowed me <laughs> you'd be all right with it i think so what's a better way if it was the ocean's decision yeah, yeah it's all like, right this is this is what <laughs> The, the earth wanted it's what guy needs it's me <laughs> that sounds a lot more peaceful than like dying in the undertow <laughs> oh yeah yeah getting torn in half by the waves uh because you can't go into a volcano that's that's those days are done so i think the ocean's like the closest thing you have to being consumed by nature you could be a, get uh mauled by a bear like i don't Legends want that. Of the fall i don't want that tornado? that sounds unpleasant oh, man, yeah, pretty cool. tornado even... yeah down here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah, you guys get destroyed, right? Oh, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> Everyone forgets about y'all. They think, like, the Dust Bowl areas where the tornadoes yeah, like are. like, Oklahoma. Just... Yeah. Terrible tornadoes. We get crushed every year. By yeah, one. the sky turns green here for, like, three months. And it you guys does. just live in fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it a watch or a warning? If it's a watch, I'm going to stay in. Well, hell, I got a watch on my, on my wrist. I mean. Around here, there's a meteorologist that wears suspenders, and they're like, if his suspenders are on, it's just a watch. If he takes the suspenders off, it's a warning. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, isn't it? Like, they, they sound like the same, like tornado watch. All right, we're going to watch out because there's a tornado. Yeah. Tornado warning. All right, this is a warning because there's a tornado. You know, yeah. like a watch, to me, is as scary. <laughs> it sounds the same. I don't think I figured it out until I was like 25. Because as a kid, it was I had them transversed in my head. I'm still not clear. <laughs> yeah. You'll figure it out. Well, before we get started, Sam, we got a few gifts for you. Oh, no. I thought you might be able to identify this hat. Oh, shit, man. Oh, man. The Norm hat? Fuck. That's so sweet. Yeah. Thank you. I know you, you love sports. I love sports, and I love Norm. Yeah, this is the scene right here. Yeah, this that's a fucking great gift. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, fucking Wes told me you guys did really good shit, like, gift-wise, so... This is excellent. Thank you. Well, this is just the first one, man. Yeah, no, I'm already. <laughs> we're, that's it. we're easing into it. Yeah, did this Norm, is amazing. Uh, did his book? Did it influence your book at all? I don't know if it influenced it, but I, it was the best novel I read that year. Uh, it was amazing. I don't think anyone had the expectations that he was going to put out like a postmodern Russian novel. <laughs> um, it was very self-aware and like perfect. And yeah, I mean, reading it's good, but then the uh, the audiobook's better because he reads it. I'm an audiobook man. Yeah, you should. That's the best way to take that book in because it's all in his cadence and timing. So jokes that you miss when you read it are mm-hmm. like the subtleties of the page really pop when he speaks them. No, I loved it. He was the best. I mean, he had a massive influence on me on stage. I can't say his book really like. I think I was influenced by the same books that influenced him. What books? Well, he read all the classics. He like loved Russian literature, and I'm uh, admittedly like not as well versed in Russian literature, but as far as like. You know, he loved Faulkner. He loved, uh, who wrote fucking East of Eden? Steinbeck. Steinbeck. Yep. He loved Steinbeck. Yeah, he liked Cormac McCarthy. So all those books. Flannery O'Connor. Those are all things that and I... You're a big Cormac McCarthy guy. Yeah, I mean, there's no one better. He's the GOAT. 
he, I mean, Blood Meridian is the best American novel. I know everyone says Moby Dick or like Beloved, but for my money, it's Blood Meridian. Well, so this isn't exactly Cormac, but the guy that wrote this also pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Fred Willard's magnificent movie trivia. <laughs> <laughs> and then Man. inside a little bookmark oh you can have for God, it. Oh my God, dude. Holy shit. You guys went deep. I love Fred Willard. Fred Willard's the greatest. He's probably the funniest guy who didn't do stand up ever. I agree, man. He, his bit, even as I got like introduced to Fred Willard was so weird. I got introduced to Fred Willard through like, not through like Best in Show or yeah. any of the things you would think. It was through him going on Conan and doing this like, I love to meet people and take pictures. Yeah. And so it's like, here's me meeting Tom Hanks, and it's just a picture of him by himself. Yeah. He's like, Tom takes a great picture. <laughs> <laughs> and he has all these celebrities take pictures of just of him. Yeah. And it was such a funny bit that he wow. did. And I was like, I love this guy. Dude, this is really cool. I mean, I'm sure the book is shit. Uh, <laughs> I kind of like thumbed through it. It's, yeah. it's, you know. He wasn't impressed. <laughs> he's, got, yeah. he's got a letter in it that I was like, I was glad I read. He just explains how the book like works and stuff. But at the end of the day, it is just like a trivia book. It's not like he came up with the trivia personally, which would have been awesome. Yeah, I mean, how desperate was this publishing company to attach <laughs> any name to this <laughs> terrible bathroom book? <laughs> it's like, oh, we couldn't get Rob Schneider. <laughs> Who's next on the phone tree? I guess Fred Willard? <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. He had a TV show with Martin Mull called Fernwood Tonight uh, that was on the 70s, and it was a uh, kind of like a... I don't know. Again, I don't, I'm going to say postmodern in the first 10 minutes and sound pretentious, but <laughs> it was them being a small town late night public access show. And uh, it was hilarious. Like my dad was a big fan of it and it used to be on TV land like very late at night. My dad would wake me up and be like, you got to watch this. And it was it's his, it's hysterical. It holds up to this day. And he's from Cleveland. My mom was from Cleveland. So there was a lot of that. And then best in show, man. I mean, there's never been a funnier Role like the be- it's like the best twelve minutes of one guy <laughs> is him as the judge, the dog judge in Best in Show. It's sure, amazing. Yeah. And he riffed all of that. Like I, I didn't know he riffed all. Yeah, that. Yeah, because those are all mostly improvised. They have a very loose script. And then Christopher Guest, like they had him for like two days, and they just let the camera run for like I think he said six hours a day. And Fred would just like go, like just fucking goofing around with that English guy who's a straight man. Yeah, he's yeah. an actual. I think he's an actual dog show is he commentator i'm pretty <laughs> sure how many push-ups sh- do you think i could do <laughs> <laughs> wow man this is like uh that weird like uh canadian guy who interviews bands and asks them questions about like their high school you know nardwar yeah nardwar yeah this is, this is as close to nardwar as we I'll joke get. that we're redneck nardwar <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's a big Whoa. inspiration for yeah sure. i'm fucking very impressed and this is this is awesome i'll put this on my mantle of cool objects so this isn't about movies at all. It is. <laughs> we'll, mean, get, we'll, we'll get, get there. there. Yeah, we trick people a way first. to dupe people into getting sentimental and teary-eyed. Your so own I mind. assume <laughs> you picked this movie in general because of a deep, burning, passionate love for Marky Mark and the Funky <laughs> Bunch. <laughs> 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 I need money. Yeah, what? I don't remember that. That's making the mantle. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, to have the balls to put this out, dude. <laughs> when did this shit come out? Uh, it was on Interscope too. What a weird time for music. This was 1991. Whoa. Yeah, he's wearing a Detroit hat for some reason. Yeah, from though. Boston, Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Hat. yeah. You like Shirtless? the Beastie Boys. I mean, your band is called the Funky Bunch, <laughs> and you're shirtless, begging for cash. It was definitely, of all the albums I was looking at, I was like, yeah, this is the one I'm picking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sure, I could get you one with the one song they sang that everyone knows, but no. Oh, yeah. Good I mean, I'll never, I'll never take the record out of this, but it'll definitely be a funny thing that people will uh, talk about at dinner parties. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face. He doesn't have You'll eyes. You'll just forget about it and someone will be thumbing through your <laughs> vinyls. One day. I don't have any vinyls. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, I barely listen to music anymore. I listen to like the same eight bands I listened to from like 2000 to 2010. But yeah, no, this is this is funny, dude. God, I never have had that much confidence. <laughs> just having your shirt off in a photo blows my mind. <laughs> like that's a lot. But then they'll be sure. snarling. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah no you don't get is... that buff without being mad though so well you know how you get that buff it's beating vietnamese men to death 
<laughs> Everyone forgot about that little it's whoopsie. Great for your core. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was that him or his brother? It was him. That was him. Yeah, he blinded he had, a Vietnamese man. There were a couple of, uh, yeah, I think racially motivated hate crimes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> perpetrated by the Wahlberg family. Yeah, they were just fucking <laughs> terrorizing <laughs> also, Vietnamese. Missed. Which Wahlberg would you be technically watching your brother get all these gifts right in front of you? <laughs> 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 um yeah this was a product produced by intense and dash tense mm. which is what they would say a lot <laughs> <laughs> describing their antics from the night previous yeah <laughs> i need money because lawyers aren't free right <laughs> and i don't want to go to prison so a lot of people don't know this but you know who played the fly saxophone on this record who walter beasley <laughs> <laughs> Max's dad. Yes, he played fly saxophone. Is what <laughs> his contributions are described as. Huh. Who, who played the cool trumpet? Not listed. The hip stand-up <laughs> bass. Yeah, but the tight trombone was uh, played by Hampton Yunt. <laughs> That's a real guy. <laughs> 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 well, this is ridiculous. You're three for three. Well, Nathan, we didn't want to leave you out completely. Oh shit! Oh, so. Sure? We got a record for you. Whoa. Uh, we, we wanted you to explain, or I did, wanted you to explain the, the Baca. What, what's Baco. Oh, Baco. Yeah, y'all's yeah. like mascot. Yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> the fans are dangerous <laughs> in their enthusiasm. We're grateful. They're that a, was all you. Well, I, I didn't say, hey, let's start a <laughs> cultural movement. Right, no, but it, yeah, I didn't, it, it I didn't resonated. Just, I just riffed it, and then they brought it to life. And now people have tattoos of the fifth Ninja Turtle, Baco. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, he was making fun of our producer, Jake Becker, who likes the Ninja Turtles. And you said something about, like, going to a kid's birthday. Becker, oh, Becker was going to go. Yeah, and he was so dumb that if he was the fifth turtle, he would call himself Baco, because <laughs> his name's Becker. Yeah. Wow. and. But yeah, and then he d he turned into like a weird anti-hero, like nihilist, <laughs> like a taxi driver esque. <laughs> yeah, character. yeah. He just wants to wash the streets of all the scum for the innocents to flourish. It is fun to imagine the four of them being so like '90s pop culture fun or whatever, like heroes. And then Baco is just like smoking, yeah, and telling them like, "Why are you even saving these pieces of shit?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all gonna be dirt one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like ja I, I always feel like Baco's jacked on speed, like the '80s, like Dexy pills that everyone was on, like Black Beauties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yellow jackets. Yes, yellow jackets. Yeah, white white crosses. This is very nice. Did you guys prefer uh, Turtles One or Turtles Two more? Turtles One had more of that taxi driver feel. Yes, it did. <laughs> Raphael, a little grimier. Really Dark Knight of the Soul. Yeah. Oh, I I just saw something I think on Twitter that said that the reason the movie is so dark is mostly I th I don't know if it's mostly or if if it's a few things, but it, part of the reason was because the suits looked bad if they were like well lit. You could see seams like they weren't like, oh, yeah, super yeah. good looking. Yeah. Uh, I under you light. his trench coat for a second. No, like, no. Oh. The the, the tur <laughs> Yeah, no. The turtle uh, costumes like looked. Yeah. You could see that they were in, fake. In, you know, in HD. I, I've seen dark. people talking about it too. You can see their mouths and their face. Like when they oh, are talking, okay. you can see another person's face. It's yeah. like a little creepy. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that was like, but but it worked out because I remember being like stoked as a kid. I went the saw it in the theater. You saw one in theaters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it, it was crazy that it was, like, dark and a little gritty because I didn't expect it. The cartoon isn't really that at all. When Raphael screams, damn, for the first time. Yeah. Like, Whoa. Yeah. 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 That was, that's not my Raphael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, we, we grew up on two, like, Me I too. guess as a kid. And then when I, at, like, 10, 11, 12, I was like, oh, I watched watch the first Turtles. It was, like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is different. This is edgy. Yeah, it was in, I think that the, the Turtles won was more influenced by the actual like idw comics yeah you know because they were like pretty gnarly and tough um but yeah i remember i saw turtles 2 because i'm like 
five, five years, years younger, younger than you. Yeah. Don't act like you don't know. Well, <laughs> I was going to say 12, and then <laughs> they wouldn't get the bit. He I lo- always say Lund's <laughs> old as hell. He loves to act like he's 23, yeah. and I'm 49, <laughs> yeah. and we have nothing in common. It's like, dude, five years is nothing, like past high school. Like, we're just two guys. Well, you've also known me, like, as long as I, almost as long as I haven't known you. Like, you, like, had an, inf- you've raised me, effectively. <laughs> Shut <Very> up. Weird. <laughs> But I saw Turtles too. So cool, you doing a podcast with your dad. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm grateful to get to spend time with him. You know, I don't know how much longer he has. <laughs> the home won't take him because there's not enough room. Um, so yeah, I saw this. My grandpa took me to see this, and my grandfather is my mom's dad, who was like a very. He was from Oxford. Well, he was from Como, Mississippi. So he was a very like southern gentleman. You know, like he wore like a fucking bow tie to the movie. And this is one of the few times I spent with my grandpa like he would take me to an arcade and sit outside and smoke cigarettes like that was what he would do but he took me to the movie and i remember this being blown open by you know number two it was awesome and then afterward i was like grandpa do you like it and he was like it's for children <laughs> sam <laughs> <laughs> that was his whole take <laughs> that wasn't for me <laughs> yeah like it's all he said it's for children sam <laughs> are these are these two uh bad guys from the comics yeah uh toka and reza yeah i don't know i didn't read the comics heavy becker would know because he's a loser but um <laughs> <laughs> uh, i do remember that shredder says babies you brought me babies oh, yeah. and then toka and reza are like mama yeah mama, yeah <laughs> donuts <laughs> used to say donuts a lot as a fat little boy my mom would be like you've had enough I me- I'm doing the voice. I memorized the speaking of fight yeah. scene. Oh, oh yeah, we didn't we didn't crack into those donuts. It's pretty perfect. You got donuts for the cop movie. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that is true. From Heroes Donuts. I used to recreate the fight scene from Turtles Two with uh, when Vanilla Ice is on stage. I'd try to do like the roll uh, off. You know, it was off of the bed, and then just I, I I'd put uh cushion couch cushions on the ground so that I could like fly around yeah. jump around but yeah, yeah I was many. obsessed with the hey, coffee age, changes. Really <laughs> I was older I was in high school my mom <laughs> thought it was a bit weird she was yeah. like this is for kids and I was like I'm young at heart I think I saw <laughs> Turtles 2 I think Ghostbusters 1 was the most influential movie on me as a kid but Turtles 2 it was like they occupy the exact same space in my head, I think, because I also had the action figures. So for some reason, they exist in the same realm. Uh, and also, what was cool, my mom went to New York when I was a kid to do like some like uh, banking conference, and she brought me home a handwritten note from the Ghostbusters. Whoa! Yeah, which was like really sweet. You know, she did it. Obviously, it was in her fucking handwriting. But she mentioned in that note that uh, like one of the, I think Peter Venkman, Bill Murray's character, he mentioned somehow how like. You know, and, then, and we saw the turtles, you know, down in the sewer. So my mom connected them in my head, and they're all like, you know, one posse rip roaring through like early '90s New York. That's not canon. No, it's not. But it should. I mean, it, it could be. <laughs> but you said you had action figures going up. Oh, of course, yeah. So hundred percent. When the I wanted to get you. <laughs> I know that on the Are You Garbage podcast, they called you the Garbage Man. Oh, shit. <laughs> you king of Garbage Mountain. <laughs> That's great, dude. I love Danny DeVito. What a fucking gift he is to the world. <laughs> Truly. It's crazy, like, <laughs> that he's still just doing Always Sunny and all these ridiculousness. And yeah. he's like 79 years old. Yes, this he's old like, as hell. It's so awesome yeah. to see him still just banging it out. He is so fucking funny, too. And everyone forgets that he like like Taxi was a huge yeah. part of American culture forever, and like he directed Matilda. Uh, yeah, he's. I mean, this. I don't know who you bought this off of, but whatever <laughs> Make a Wish kid did this with his one hand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably made it yourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy made it. Don't. <laughs> 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 no, thank you, Bad Monster Toys. Um, no, that's great. Yeah, I had a, <laughs> <coughs> like, the end of last year, my friend Stephen Fine Arts um, somehow got us in the room to, like, pitch DeVito his final movie, because he wants to, like, direct a one last movie and then kind of, you know, die with grace or whatever. Go into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to find the biggest guard. He would. Guard. <laughs> he would. <laughs> yeah, like, one, he didn't have to get in a whale. Like spot. a rum ham. <laughs> yeah, it's very buoyant. But, yeah, we pitched him this thing, like, this, like, Lost in Translation esque thing, him going to Berlin to find like old lost love, and uh, he was just like nodding, and then at the end of it, 
he just got off the call. <laughs> <laughs> just was gone? Yeah. He was very nice, but then at the end of it, he was like, all right, and then just disappeared. And then Whoa. his people were like, yeah, he will get back to you. So I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, he's so funny. That's cool. I didn't know that you did that. I would only share my successes with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's all right. All right, moving things along. Nathan, the next Whoa. thing we got you. Ha, ha, ha. Damn. What the hell? An erotic journey from Milan to Ming. It's a real. Oh, it's. Rochelle, Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real movie, is it? <laughs> Let's pop it in and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pop it Whoa. in and you guys leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. I saw where you tweeted where uh, you like saw a black guy in an episode of Seinfeld. You're like, take a drink. And it made me wonder: Is there are there more black people in The Departed or or Seinfeld? Very close. Interesting. They yeah. What's what's funny? They, Seinfeld. There's a lot of a lot of like very small <laughs> like uh, uh who just uh, uh an an actor just passed away. This woman who was on Seinfeld twice. She's uh like a social worker. She like works at the home. So she talks to George about how that book was in the bathroom. Oh yeah, and yeah. then uh, she's in the muffin yep. tops. She comes in and yells at them because they keep leaving the, the bottom. Stubs. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, at the shelter. I think it's a shelter that she works at. But yeah, that woman uh, was on those who can't with the uh, the Grolix guys. Um, they're from Denver. Adam, Kate, and Holland, and Ben oh, Roy, and whoa. Andrew Orvidal. They had a show on True TV. Those who can't. Adam, Ben, and the other guy. And she was very <laughs> she was very funny on that. She just she just died. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> She was Great on the story. <laughs> the, yeah. Well, the I'm just saying, curse. Curse. <laughs> there were bla- there were funny small parts for black yeah, actors. Killed them all off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, not a lot of. I mean, Jackie Childs. Oh, was yeah. a Jackie re- Childs. Recurring, very funny. And there character. was that lady who showed up in a couple episodes. She was like the like the one you just described. The, the, the exterminator the girl that he gives a lot of coke to the yeah. rails from behind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So there's one I can't think of another. One. There's also the guy who shows Anthony up. Anthony Anderson. Oh, oh yeah, God! Yeah, wow, he was in it. Yeah. How I forget that a few times. I, yeah. well, I always forget that he's in it until I seen him because it's such he young wasn't. Anthony Anderson. Yeah, yeah it's he, like he wasn't. It's in like fresh yet. off Kangaroo Jack, Anthony Anderson. Yep. Like mm-hmm. it really. It, the movie's so long too. I, I I keep forgetting he's in it. Like yeah. anytime yeah. he probably, I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> did the third act, man. <laughs> yeah, there's also uh, in Seinfeld uh, the guy, the road rage guy, at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's uh, it's like Jerry's like one of his best friends. Mm. He has a great episode of Art Comedians and Coffee, but yeah, I think that the that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> They're both very, I guess, good white, question, white Cooper environments. Manning. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off the bench with a slam dunk. <laughs> Cooper Manning. <laughs> you resemble a Manning. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not a bad thing. They're very successful against yeah, some men. He's, he's well, doing, Peyton's doing okay. a little hit, but. Yeah, yeah, you're you like Manning, right? A little right? hit. <laughs> Peyton's a bit busted. He's got like <laughs> sex addict forehead. <laughs> oh <my laughs> you goodness. know, from this face all the time. <sighs> oh, just like coming, <laughs> and <then> foreheads push back. <laughs> I haven't heard about this phenomenon. Oh yeah, Jack Nicholson has it. Getting laid too much. Yeah. Okay. Damn. So did you guys just have this on hand? I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I actually amazing. ordered a few of those. Just, wow. I love Seinfeld, so I try to you know make any opportunity to make people talk to it about me <laughs> <laughs> i just watched it again all the way through um oh, and it's it's, it's yeah. awesome me it's too. so good yeah, yeah it holds up it's it's so it's like weirdly like there's stuff that's like not relevant when they're talking about like the speed dial right and just yeah. stuff like that but there's other stuff where it's like this is just so timeless yeah that it is relevant yeah i mean like the movie phone episode holds up but i can imagine being a child watching it now and being like, like what? What? Why? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> why you call? He, you watch a movie over like the that? phone? <laughs> <laughs> That's what a phone? This? Yeah. Just Google that. Dude, I don't know if anyone's better than Michael Richards. He's the funniest physical comedian in the history of film or television. I love his stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cooper Manning yeah. would, right? <laughs> <laughs> Does Cooper have a problem? <laughs> I don't know. He's, oh, so, okay. he's yeah. like Ole Miss, There's right? a reason he's not on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone from old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew Isn't a that guy. so funny? Alabama taking shots at Mississippi. Yes. Like, all right, come on, chill out. Well, hey, man, historically, don't you punch guys... down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we are. Like, we're like, well, at least we're not as bad as Mississippi. Those yeah. roads. Whew. Yeah, dude. Mm. 
I knew a guy who went to Old Miss. Like, I don't know how I knew him, but I just remember there was a dude that was around for a while in my early 20s who would, he would get fucking wasted. And out of nowhere, he'd go, went to a little school called Old Miss. You might have heard of it. And that was his catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> he would say it all the time. <laughs> it's like, we, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's Andy from The Office, right? Cornell. Cornell, Cornell yeah. <laughs> so, next thing we got you. This is stupid, but I think you'll like it. Whoa, nice one. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> what the fuck? How deep did you guys dig? That was that uh that was that Denver basketball the Oh, that's I what was you on, called? I was on Jeff T Jeff Tice's team. That's what you called yourself? Yeah, we were the Queen City Hacks. We had jerseys made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the Queen that's City awesome. Hacks. Denver Comedy All-Star Basketball Champs. Guys, this is so sweet. <laughs> That, my dad played on that team with us. Really? Yeah, because we needed oh, one more guy, yeah. and old Dave T came off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad was like, he got a scholarship for basketball back in the day. Before, like, oh, the wow. three-point line, he was, like, <laughs> very accomplished. Like, uh, Pete Maravich was his favorite guy. But, uh, yeah, he came off the bench, and he played. We had Brant Tobler, and we had Jeff Tice. And Jeff Tice played college ball at CU. He's, like, a six-foot-six, like, uh, former, like, raised in Australia. Like, just a piece of meat compared to... The rest of the people who were in those on those teams, and Tice just dominated. He like dunked on people. <laughs> Brant Tober is an amazing passer. Yeah, Brant Tober was dropping dimes on. People he left used to and play right, a dude. lot of basketball. He yeah. loved, loves basketball. People that like, I, I know it's so weird, but people that pass the ball really well. It's my favorite part of the game. It's same. It's almost like it's like a language. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's in kind of I don't know. It's 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 when you watch, you don't have to t talk. No. You, like when I would play rec ball growing up with people, it's like there were certain people that show up on certain days and it'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna have a good day." Yeah, because me and this guy, like, we just know how to play basketball. Mm -hmm. That's why I think Jokic is like, he's so beautiful. His game is so pretty because it's selfless and also his ability to share the ball around the, the court is just remarkable. He might be the best passer like ever. Yeah, like, he's incredible. I mean, I think Wild. Stockton might be upset, but there's there's more beauty and grace to his passing game than there is to any other part of his game. Like he looks like he just like he looks like a baby deer often. It was know? like effortless too. <laughs> it is, but like when he passes the ball, it's like it's it's artistry. It's so good. God, that was such a fun day. My mom was there watching my dad. Like <laughs> my dad would run from like three point line to three point line and just like stand and pass the ball. But then he got it in the corner one time and he pump faked and uh fuck, who was I think Brian Sullivan went to swat it. And he went into the bleachers, and my dad just <laughs> drained a fucking three. Whoa. It was sick, dude. That was, like, my old man's top highlight as an adult, <laughs> I think. <laughs> and then he also did the thing where he, like, held his hand up as he walked down the floor. <laughs> like, where did you learn that, yeah, dude? Three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he hit him with the two small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That was I forgot about that. I still have this jersey hung up in my office. You have to drape it over the trophy now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn it, guys. The first thing <laughs> I thought up. of for that day was that I was like one for nine. I, I missed <laughs> everything. And then I started passing, and we won yeah. uh, a game. Yeah. I think. And then I don't remember what happened after the one game. I think we were supposed to have another day of playing. Like the two winners were supposed to play, Maybe but we didn't do it. Away. <laughs> I can't was so remember out of how, that, how that went down. But, yeah, it was embarrassing how – how many like open shots I miss and then I was like, all right, I just have to pass now and not continue to look like a fucking idiot. Yeah. I was rebounding. I mean, I played I played from like second grade <laughs> till like the trash man. The trash <laughs> man. Oh dude, Theo Ratliff's my favorite player. Alabama's own Theo Ratliff. Oh down wow. from Demopolis. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I loved like he was like a Sixers? store uh, yeah, a journeyman. Played with the Blazers too. He was like a like a fucking, you know, store brand uh Dennis Rodman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But man, I loved Theo. And I, yeah, I, I was a fucking force until everyone could start jumping. <laughs> that was huge. Like fifth grade, sixth grade basketball, it was like game over. <laughs> I had like 35 rebounds in a game one time. <laughs> also, my dad was keeping my stats. So I <laughs> he patted him. He for sure. It was like me and Clay DeHaan. Clay DeHaan's like six foot seven now, but we were just like the twin towers down there. <laughs> it was, we were raising hell. God, that was so much fun. This was a great day. I'm glad I have this to remember it by. <laughs> we fucking dominated. It was rough because, like I said, Tice was just, it might as well have been fucking 
Jordan out there against all these <laughs> fat bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were all sucking wind. Oh, dude, brutal. Yeah. Just like crazy in shape, dude. Well, yeah. And yeah, like also stayed like, in you shape, know, played yeah. Division One college yeah. basketball. Yeah. And it was like, God, uh, I thought I was in, like, I was like, I can do this. And I just remember being like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. It was me and Pat Richardson. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. He was he was out there. He was on the team as well. Did he tuck in his jersey? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. This was this is great. Damn. Well, the next thing is for you, Nathan. One of oh, my friends shit. made this. This is called the Bark Tender. It's uh <laughs> you can it's like a little for your dog, you can turn into a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> you put some gold. Oh, boys. I know you love dogs, and I think you like booze too. So, I quit drinking, but I can put some soda waters in this bitch. Oh yeah, perfect. This might fit my dog, Mama. <laughs> you, you. We've literally talked about this in the pod about what? have Mama grab you a drink, have Mama <laughs> grab you a LaCroix. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that rules. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you better put Mama's bitch ass to work. You're such a useless animal. Well, if she has a seizure, yeah, she'll I won't be able up. to. Yeah, I won't be able to drink the cans <laughs> for a while. I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have get to, her to carry you hoos. I have to put them in the. Yeah, yeah. We can. <laughs> You got some stuck apple with juice. the worst dog ever, dude. No, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, it sucks. You got a bill of goods. His <laughs> wife was like hanging out on the street, you know. <laughs> that sounds bad. His wife was walking home, and they used to live at a pretty, like, we lived in a weird part of Denver, like off Colfax, which wasn't, you know, necessarily dangerous, but definitely like, populated with people who didn't have homes. And this guy, like, walked up with a dog and was like, can you hold this for me for a minute? <laughs> and then never came back. <laughs> and you're stuck with a seizure dog for 10 years now. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> we love her. No. She, she's worth it. <laughs> she stinks. <laughs> no, you, ju- you just don't George like Michael. You just don't like dogs. You're not a dog person. I don't like other people's dogs. I loved my dog. Yeah, when my dog walked up today, you just went dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He didn't care. Yeah, my heart melted for both of them. They're I both care about very people. Sweet dogs. You don't like people. You That's don't like people thing. either. I love people. <laughs> you don't like anything. I love it all. Yeah, I love the power. <laughs> yeah, you I just love making people think I love people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I love people. You're all about image and trying to bilk everybody out of something. A couple okay. bucks. I insult your dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now you indict my character. Yeah, you're a piece of shit and I hate you. <laughs> How about that? Only you know the man behind the mask. Here, put on the bartender <laughs> vest. <laughs> <laughs> Go get me a goddamn soda water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd have you grab me a soda water, but based on your shooting percentage, I don't know if I'd get it. <laughs> Man, it was so bad. You were terrible. I've, I don't know the last just time Tony I played. Allen out there. Oh yeah. I don't know the last no time I played. It was like, God yeah. damn it. Just clanging them off the fucking rim, like n- hitting like the upper part of the scoreboard. Or the, yeah, like it was. It was crazy. Yeah, I was very off. I think <laughs> yeah. I had a decent like warm up. Yeah. And so I felt okay. And then in the game it was just like, What the fuck is going on? Like <laughs> he's fast. I looked like I had never played before. <laughs> yeah. Like, usually where I come from, the ball is square. So this <laughs> is gonna be different. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. But then I went into Jokic mode and started passing and yep. it was nice to facilitate. I always liked Brant Tobler, but then I saw him like between the legs like he went through someone like the opposing defender's legs and like behind his own back and it was like oh this guy's awesome <laughs> yeah he played, a, he played a lot of ball yeah so to bring it back to the movie last thing we got you some coasters oh so my wife's gonna lose her little fucking but also over. felt like we needed to get <laughs> some cranberry juice what are you on your period <laughs> 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 that, yeah that just happened a few minutes ago yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. guys you can hit and there's guys you can't hit and he's almost a guy you can't hit. <laughs> <laughs> he's not quite a guy you can't hit. He's not quite a hit. guy you can't hit, yeah. We were talking about, like, last second, like, oh, man, we should have brought some breakable glass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, that, like, that fake, like, how fun would that have been? Yeah. Could have eased the tension between you two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could blast him right now. <laughs> we, we had fake bottles made for, uh, you know, High Plains uh, Comedy Festival is in Denver every year. And me and him and... Uh, two other guys used to run a show together and we have a show every year on the festival and we always wanted to have like a fun crazy open you know so that people would like make sure to to come see our show amongst all the other options oh yeah Yeah. and so we always like would try to top ourselves and one year we we have uh, a friend who was um running this like very creative like a maker uh, shop 
Yeah, maker's space. 3D a printers, bunch. screen printing, anything you want to like put together, you could probably like figure it out. Yeah, and we so we we started with him and we were like, "Hey, can can you help us make fake glass Sugar bottles?" Sugar bottles. And it is a fucking process cuz mm-hmm. the first one that he or the first couple that I think he made were too thin, so they broke right away. And then he made one and wanted us to like test it out, and so we <laughs> there's video of it. Uh, our buddy Chris just blasts Sam in the forehead and he goes, it's too thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah my was, head was bleeding. <laughs> it was wild. Smash him. Oh! <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Head for sure. Oh, no. Uh. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. It <laughs> I remember eating some of that glass, like seeing what it tasted like. It was so gross. It's, it's not just it's not sugar. sugar, it turns you out. Psycho. Yeah. <laughs> of course you eat it. Yeah. Yeah. My mouth. I gotta bleeding. know, man. I gotta <laughs> know. <laughs> but yeah, that was a fun. We ended up having probably like eight of them for the show. <laughs> I thought you meant you ate them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we can't. They, could they were stop. they were yeah. gross, but we ate this them. tastes bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was what, like handling the nuclear. You pop, man, you just can't stop. Oh yeah, those bottles. Woo. Sugar is addictive. <laughs> we handled them like a newborn too, because we were so worried we were gonna blow our very bad open. If we didn't have these <laughs> bottles, we didn't have enough jokes to like back up. <laughs> so yeah, we it was it's very like delicate. Carrot top, you can't lose your act. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like also like, are they gonna melt? It was it was very. Was that where we had the motorcycle on stage? No, we had the band. Oh, the band. Yeah, that was that was a good. That was. A good we had band. a band behind a curtain, and we said that we couldn't. Usually, we'd come out to Mississippi Queen. And I guess a big part of the, the the first few years of our opening would have to do with uh, us not being able to come out to the song for whatever reason. And that year we said that there, we had gotten like a cease and desist. And then uh, Bobby, the fourth uh, member of our group, came out and said that we got this like notice that Mountain said we could use Mississippi Queen as long as we like had fun or something, as long as, <laughs> as, long as we partied. <laughs> It was okay. It was very thin premise. But as you can see, we needed these bottles. <laughs> yeah, the bottles were the whole. The bottles in the band were the whole thing, and then yeah. we just connected a couple of dots. Uh-huh. But yeah, so we said, as long as we have, as long as we uh, party hard, yeah. then we can use the song. And so we're like, well, what are we gonna do? And then one of us just smashed a bottle over somebody's head, and it was like. It, and then uh, the, the opening, the, the opening guitar riff started yeah. from the band, and we go, "It worked!" Yeah. <laughs> and then we ripped down the curtain, and they blasted Mississippi Queen. There was another one we <laughs> did where it, we went to. It was before we went to Paris, or mm-hmm. the four of us went to Paris, 2019. Yeah, and uh, this was before. And like the night before, I was on mushrooms, and we didn't have an opening. We always wrote it the night before, and I was like. What if uh, what if we did the bag gag? And they were like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "What if we just put us all in trash bags? <laughs> what, if we, what if we hid oh, in yeah, garbage bags?" I think I saw a picture of you ripping <laughs> you out, of out of the trash bag. That was another reason for the trash man. <laughs> yes. No, dude, you guys are really, really, truly good at your jobs. Um, <laughs> if we wouldn't be, <laughs> that would be that would make me a cunt. Are you calling me a cunt? <laughs> yeah, but like with the trash bag thing, I got four comics to get in trash bags, and we had to get in before the doors opened so it was a surprise so we were just in trash bags for like 50 minutes like sweating <laughs> suffocating <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was so stupid i remember they came over finally and like poked holes in the bags it was like these four young comics who wanted to be on the festival so <laughs> we got them in these bags and then when we came out it was like when jim carrey comes out of the rhino in ace ventura because we were just, like, soaked. <laughs> like, just sweat plastered and dripping. It was I'm gross. Frank coming out of the Yes, couch. it was that. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Bingo, Tra- man. Trash man. <laughs> 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 and everyone freaking out at that party. Is there a man in that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, on uh, your audio book. Mm-hmm. I love audio books. I was, I, I was listening a little bit of it, but I was curious uh, – like, were you surprised by any of the performances, or like, how did you go about get getting those? Did you just call those guys? And I called in favors from people I barely knew, but luckily, like, like Bert Kreischer, like, really wanted to do it, you know, um, because he loved the book. It's like the only book he's ever read, probably. Mm-hmm. 
So that was like kind of like one of the smartest things I've ever done, honestly, is like get all those different comics with different demographics and different fan bases to come together to read those chapters. So it was like a marketing ploy. But uh, the audiobook definitely suffered from the different levels of literacy. Uh, Dan Soder did an amazing job. David Borey did an amazing job. Um, Chris Gethard. There's people who like really stood out who've read before. Stan Hope did a great job. But uh, yeah, like, you know, Kreischer he couldn't say the name of the town to come carry you know um i had uh my, my becker our producer and my old buddy joe hatfield were the audio guys on that and they would hit me up and be like this is almost unusable there was one guy who we couldn't use the audio of oh yeah who's, who's been on your podcast oh really yeah yeah interesting um, yeah so i definitely if you like if you like reading I would, <laughs> <laughs> we figured out who it is the new orleans public education system you know um <laughs> but yeah if you if I, I wrote a book and if you like reading books read it uh you can buy it on samtalent.com or if you are like more of a passive consumer of content or you like podcasts like i think that the podcast demographic, which is how I mostly promoted the book, definitely liked the audio book because they can listen to their, their favorite comics, like, you know, read it. But if you're, like, a fan of, like, prose and literature, for the love of God, don't fucking listen to the audio book because <laughs> it's, uh, it's rough in spots for sure. I've only – I got through Dan Soder's part so far, mm -hmm. but yeah. he just, like – I was like, wow. Like, I was oh, yeah. really impressed. Like, I felt like he definitely put in extra effort. He really did. And then, God bless him, Tim Dillon did me a huge favor, and you can tell he's just, like – blasting cigs and rushing <laughs> through it you know <laughs> yeah no i didn't really know all of those guys that well i mean i knew the majority of them but like yeah like i was blown away that like bert and tim were willing to do that so that's super interesting grateful. from an outsider's perspective it, it seems like comedians are you know way closer sometimes than yeah than maybe y'all are I mean, I just didn't know Bert. I, okay, I literally yeah. met Bert. I did his podcast because Stanhope talked about the book so much. And then he got it to Bert, and Bert was like, this is amazing. Then Bert started talking about it on his Instagram. And then I went on Bert's podcast just because of Stan. Like, everything came from, well, Mishka Shubali initially, but then Stanhope, just like Marin, you know, he gave it to Rogan. Like, all this stuff happened just because he was so good about it. But I didn't know Tim Dillon at all. Like, uh, I knew his producer Ben Avery, and I was like, "Hey, do you think you get Ben to, or Tim to do this?" And then he finally did it after like three months of cajoling. And then from that, I got to open for Tim, and when he came to Denver, and then Tim took me to fucking you know every English speaking country in the world opening for him last year. So yeah, a lot of really good things came from that book. Yeah, because you were gonna do the upstairs comedy, mm -hmm. and then you ended up going to Europe, and yep. I was like, "Man, he picked." Birmingham, UK <laughs> over Birmingham, <laughs> Alabama. What an idiot. Yeah, everyone was very nice about it, except for uh, there was one person, I think in Atlanta, who was like, oh, man, seriously? No way. And I was like, what do you mean seriously? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing like the O2 in London for three nights. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. I can't do your Wednesday at the brewery, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't the Atlanta guy. It was a different guy in the South. The Atlanta guy was actually very nice. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, I, it was. Figure it out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Richard Lockhart. <laughs> Take the time. <laughs> oh, hell. Come on, man. We got a good crowd. We brewing. sold 11 tickets. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go hang out with Richard tonight. <laughs> yeah, and you are going to Pensacola? I'm going to Pensacola. He's Sam's gonna going to town. He didn't let me come to Pensacola. No, you said it was booked up or whatever. They and booked every comedian in Pensacola. <laughs> that does not surprise me. Yeah, it's real yeah, Iowa so gonna, lineup. Where is it, where's it at? I'm be Vinyl. Here. Okay. Yeah. But he's gonna stay and hang out with uh, Wes and Kristen Rand and their babies. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen them in a while. Our Kristen was at um, our our friend's wedding uh, last July, but I hadn't seen Wes and and the kids. I hadn't met their their youngest, and so they hung awesome. out with them a little bit yesterday yeah, in the no. in the green room. When you text me, you're like, she showed up. It was like. This is so much more important than yeah. any podcast. Like, dude, the life is so much more. Do that. I appreciate that sentiment because I needed, like, that was what was most important was us seeing Rand and the kids. Absolutely. You know? He probably wouldn't have been able to see him except for then. Yeah. So except for yesterday, so. I'm glad that worked out. And yeah. I love Kristen, too. I mean, she's just, and her and Wes are just the best. Dude. Kristen Rand at our buddy's wedding was just the life force of this thing. <laughs> she was laughing and screaming so much her voice disappeared by like the second day. So she was just like, ah, ah, 
Uh, yeah. 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 Which is classic her. Like, <laughs> yeah. High planes. Blown out immediately. Blown out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just yeah, screaming. and We shouldn't say she's blown out. <laughs> <laughs> Vocal cords. You know her. Blown out. <laughs> yeah. Just stretch. Damn, Wes. <laughs> yeah, she's ruined. <laughs> it's a cavernous hole. Kristen ran. <laughs> I'm going to clip that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's crazy to be around kids because we don't have you know i don't have any you don't have any uh to be around children for more than an hour it's like holy fuck and you just do this all day every day and they're like yep it's like my god i can't believe it i'm it's so exhausting. glad I'm so, I'm so glad i don't have children i know they're like the best or whatever but fuck that <laughs> <laughs> i'm so glad i didn't accidentally squirt inside of some fucking person and then all of a sudden i just have a headache for the rest of eternity i'd be in the ocean yeah. <laughs> i would have been me, in the goddamn me, ocean <laughs> yeah i'm done decided have your way with this me. motherfucker won't shut up <laughs> man you're that's like <laughs> the depth of that uh observation is the same as my like going to japan and saying everyone's japanese <laughs> raising kids is difficult <laughs> oh wow <laughs> what a breakthrough <laughs> yeah but it, it's just crazy how you know that that's true and then once you really when you hear the details like kristen said yesterday you can't prepare for it you can you know it's hard but it's even she harder that than thing that. that everyone else has said that has kids oh my god <laughs> this is gonna be a long train ride i'm sick of you maybe maybe not maybe fuck yourself <laughs> how many great quotes are in this movie oh dude yeah and mark Wahlberg has a lot of them mm -hmm. him well, and alec baldwin, baldwin. Yeah. yeah yeah the two of well the two of them together are very good mm -hmm. and uh yeah no i haven't watched it in a while but it's fucking fun who's y'all's favorite performance alec baldwin he's so funny in this movie yeah shit that's a good one and he's just a little bit of like levity to what is a pretty you know heavy uh <laughs> bit of business and he just every scene he's in it he steals it he's so good if you had to describe this movie like a wrong way how would you describe it wrong way. like for me it's like this movie is about a really really bad crime therapist yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she gets she gets got so hard. Yeah, yeah she gets progressively less Boston throughout the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's yeah she's maybe the bottom of the performance ladder. Yeah, I think that it's a closeted gay man works his way through the ranks of uh, the Boston police force. Because <laughs> what's his name can't get it up for her. Yeah, yeah. Matt Damon. Impotent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's all there's like that theory that he's uh he's gay in this film. I wonder if it was the stress of all this shit that he was having to deal with. Oh, for sure. Double but life it's and more all that. fun to dig deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Be naughty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop being sassy. Can't help it. <laughs> Stop being flirty. You're being flirty. <laughs> what, because I was mean to you? You're turned on? Yeah. <laughs> You'll find out. We have a sleeper car in the train. <laughs> you know, uh, Leo's pretty damn good in this. Oh yeah, they're all great. They're all great. And everything. Well, I'm trying to pick my yeah. favorite. I think. Well, if it's it, tough. Without with Baldwin uh, being taken, Martin Sheen's great too. I would. Oh damn! Yes, he is. <laughs> I would. I would maybe stick with Leo. I, I'll take uh, Matt Damon. I usually, I usually yeah. like him a lot of stuff, and I just hate him in here because it's yeah. his character. You know, it's so satisfying seeing him die. Job. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not talking even about Jack Nicholson, who turns in a caricature of himself. You mean Jack Nicholson? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a dual threat uh, on the on the green on the course, and the in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the green, on, on the screen. screen. <laughs> Damn it! No, you we like you so nailed it. You <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> oh, you know who else is good? Is his cousin, his shitbag cousin, who gets him into the game when he gets out oh, of jail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't ever remember that guy's name, but he's just one of the better character actors. Um, yeah, he's really good in this too, and it's just it's an all star. I, the fucking the the his number one the the hitman is also awesome. Yeah, French. Yeah, French. It's yeah. just there's no one is blowing it in this movie, except for the therapist. Well, she's trying to blow it, and it's getting soft. <laughs> <laughs> he's it's like he's coming soft. Yeah. He comes at her so easily and gets that one pill. Like it was like I'm gonna kill myself. So she's like, and she does it so like <laughs> yeah like mm -hmm. i'm cool like it's yeah. like the teacher turning the chair around in That's the front right, of the class yeah. and then he's just like one pill like uh -huh. i'm killing myself and he leaves and she chases him down that's when she's at her most boston because she's yeah. just like 
why is the last patient so hard? Uh-huh. And then, like, her accent gets less Boston, like, throughout the rest of the movie. It's, like, my only, like, criticism. You I know what's funny so much. is you hit me up to do this pod, and I didn't, like, really think that hard about it. I was like, well, I, my wife's, it's my wife's favorite movie. So it, it, I have good memories of watching this movie with her. And I, it's one of the few movies I can put on at any time and, like, watch it. You know, like if it's on, like the way my dad with The Godfather, if The Godfather's on, it's like, well, the next three hours are just done because he's not moving. Like, I'll watch The Departed. But I don't even think it's my favorite Boston movie, man. I think The Town is, like, honestly my favorite movie. Sounds like, so good. Jackass and Borat, like, those are the best, obviously. <laughs> we can't even argue Obviously. About that. <laughs> I mean, they're the best things ever. This is a literary man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing better. Those are pure hilarity i saw you were wanting yeah. to get a screening to jackass for did you ever pull that off i did not no but i did see it in theaters opening night with like a bunch of adult men and then there was like dudes with their kids in there and we were like grabbing the people's shoulders in front of us like strangers it was like when the undertaker comes out and like an old black guy and a little white kid turn to each other and they're like ah! you know? <laughs> that was that was me at jackass four <laughs> <laughs> just like screaming all the time. <laughs> Me, David Bory, and I was creasy. Just like, ah! Ah! <laughs> I love that the Undertaker is the one that binds us all together. Dude, isn't it crazy? Uh, yeah. Like that's why wrestling is 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 like worthwhile because it really brings people from all socioeconomic backgrounds together because they're so stoked that like Cactus Jack survived. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a good art form. It's a very American art form. Um, but yeah, I think the town, which I think is nuts. I mean, The Departed's better, isn't Dude, it? Dude, pure entertainment. The town though? is fun. The yes. town has a a ton of bullets flying. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think this. I don't know. Like this is kind of. Some people think this is kind of like kitschy. Like oh, the double switch. But it kind. I think it kind of works. Like it's not like it's insane. I didn't see it coming the first time happen. either. Yeah. The, yeah. The elevator scene. Yeah, it's amazing. It was such a like shocking uh-huh. thing where it's just the whole. Br- I don't know what's gonna happen after that. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was one of those few moments in like film where you're like, <gasps> wow, you Absolutely. know, it was just a cool thing. And I don't really have like the vocabulary or like the skill set to really be able to enjoy film like a lot of people can. Because like you I don't kinda, either. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. This podcast is I'm about like. the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All those three guys just died. <laughs> yeah. That's me watching a movie. is like, oh. So, like, when I say, like, The Town, it's because that movie's badass. And also, I watched it at a weird part in my life where I just got back into smoking weed. And my buddy Rand Barnaclo, who's hilarious from Cincinnati, was staying at my house. And my dad was staying at my house. And uh, Rand came back home, and I had a weed pen, and I had a fucking uh, jewel in my hand. And he came home, like, after shows. It was 1 a.m. All the lights in my house were on. And the town was at, like, 99 volume. <laughs> and Rand said he heard gunshots from the street. Uh-huh. And he came in. And I was just sitting there on the couch <laughs> watching the town at max volume with all the lights on. And he came in. And he's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's asleep in the next damn room. You're blasting the damn town at max volume? What the <laughs> hell is going on in here? <laughs> and I was just on the couch like, dude, have you seen this? Like, have I seen the town? What are you fucking talking about? everyone's seen the town and i was like i haven't seen it man it's amazing <laughs> he took his hat off and threw it on the ground he's like, all right i'll leave you be with your fucking town <laughs> all the lights are I'll on because you, you were be. scared i love all the lights on in the house <laughs> you know what might be a bigger uh shock than the mark Wal- Wahlberg shooting uh damon at the end is sheen just splatting on the fucking ground yeah. mm-hmm. i i guess you could maybe assume that they would kill him but for him to shoot yeah, it's just, <laughs> yep. just out of nowhere. Like, oh god, damn! Yeah, yeah and the blood like splatters blast, on the Leo. Yeah, blasts them. Yep. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of movies, like Tarantino movies, where everyone dies at the end, but you yeah. don't really feel it emotionally. Like no. these, I don't know. Yeah. I, every death, even rewatching it, it's kind of like we said the elevator scene. That was the first time I'd seen something where it was just like, "Are you kidding me?" Like the guy, my guy that I'm rooting for, is, he's gone now. Yeah. Well, even Anthony Anderson yeah. made me so sad. Yeah. <laughs> like because right. it was he, just he, like, damn, man, like yeah, because he fucked up. Mm-hmm. He was just being a good, you know, friend. Really, he, he, yeah, he didn't know enough. To <laughs> yeah, too sweet to realize world. what the hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> too sweet. <laughs> 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 and it is cool when he when he falls off that building because it's like that's his only lifeline. Disab- oh, when he's when he plummets, when he's tossed. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, think it was you, suicide. you think he yeah. killed himself? I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm so sick of this shit. <laughs> Where's the ocean? God damn, it's too far away. I'm just, I'm just walking. <laughs> Take me Poseidon. <laughs> He's like that lady last night on the patio. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh man, yeah, this woman was hilarious. She was. Was so drunk and was just like uh, so oblivious to what she was asking Sam about, like, how do you know when to get up? She acted like he had gone very long, like yeah. the show should have ended, but he kept going. It was such a weird take <laughs> because he had done well and he didn't do like a bunch more time than he was supposed to. Yeah. So like no basis in reality for her questioning. And then she caught herself like no, like no drunk person ever has before. Yeah. She realized she was not making sense. And then she just starts berating herself. <laughs> yeah. It went from like, so how do you, like, how do you know when it's over? Like, you just <laughs> you just feel it. Like, when do you know when it's time to get done? And I was like, <laughs> well, it's and that was, this is like three minutes of her saying that simple statement. And I was like, you just it's you know, I do have a certain amount of time. I'm supposed to do a certain amount of time. And then <laughs> <laughs> she just goes. What the fuck am I doing, man? What the <laughs> fuck? God damn it! What the fuck am what I talking about? What are you talking about? God of course there's a, of course there's a runtime. Like it was so, it was so funny that she caught herself. She didn't double down. She didn't like leave. She just starts taking herself to task. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> what the uh, fuck, Mandy? Yeah, it's that Mandy lady. You do stand up around here. You probably know Mandy. Wait. Who? The fucking drunk woman who comes to all the shows. She I had guess? an Auburn umbrella. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. She's just she's not a comedian. No. I don't okay. Think so. I was like, no, I don't know. It Mandy. was it was so far. Unless she's new. But <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I kind of know who you're talking yeah. about. She. But yeah, it was the beginning was funny too because she really was like, she sounded confused because she it, she was making it sound like Sam blew it and did way more time than he should have. Yeah. And it was like, according to who? Like, were you sitting there looking at your watch, being like? We were supposed to get out of here ten minutes. Like <laughs> yeah. she had no real reason to think that. Honestly, you know, the runtime was wasn't. It was a good run show. Like yeah. it wasn't yeah. long at all. No. I'm very yeah, it was weird about like if the show feels like it's going long. Yeah. Like I will just do forty five and give them a better show than like do more time and let it kind of suffer. But yeah, I did like fifty six minutes last night and it was going well. And oh, right, you weren't great. struggling. Yeah. They weren't. The crowd wasn't like. Yeah, it was funny. And then it was funny that she realized. <laughs> <laughs> that she was in the wrong or whatever. And then what the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> she just starts yelling at herself. Yeah, it was awesome. What I've never the seen hell? That. <laughs> Ethan from our office came yeah. and brought a, a date or whatever. And oh, yeah. This girl with him. And there'd be times, like, she, I could tell she wasn't, like, someone that's done a ton of comedy. Like, a comedy show, because she kept being like, oh, you can't say that. Oh, no. Like, and saying <laughs> stuff like that. Like, oh. and, and, like, but not loud enough to, like, heckle, but, yeah. like, loud enough to, like, the rose. Yeah. And so, and she'd, like, be like, he'd start laughing. She'd be like, you can't laugh. And he'd start laughing harder. Yeah, <laughs> and then she awesome. would inevitably start laughing. Because yeah. he's like, he's not giving up on yeah. what, like, this is funny. And it was cool <laughs> to see someone that, like, I could tell if she like wanted it to be bad, it could have been in her mind. But like y'all just like were so good, it was just like, all right, uh, it's good, you, I'm man. gonna keep laughing through you talking, and she eventually joined him. Yeah, huh? I'm glad you can't say that. <laughs> oh my lord, my god, you can't say that. Hush let alone into a microphone. What about that pick me girl that was like, I like bull peanuts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird heel to die on. So that boiled peanuts <laughs> bit is like a bit that I've I've done for like. A long time, but it's only when I'm in the South. I can only do it in like you know, yeah. like fucking Alabama, Mississippi specifically. And it's just a fun thing to talk about, but it, it has historically gotten me in some hot water. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, when I saw that clip, I was like, I don't know about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys love boiled. I'm peanuts. not buying shit for this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it's ludicrous. <laughs> They're so not gonna gross. go shopping for gifts for this sack of shit. Yeah. I'm not talking about my print a goddamn statue. <laughs> those, are, come those, out. those are my peanuts, man. Yeah. <laughs> talking my about people. my. She tried to burn you. I could hear her when she said uh, that she liked them, and you said, uh, "You sound like you have some in your mouth right yeah. now." And then you said something like, "What about something?" And she goes, "What about you wearing shorts?" Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut me but to the core. Everybody was laughing, so it uh, did not hit. Yeah. She didn't. She didn't score. 
on that it's one. It's like some people should just shut the fuck up. Yeah, have some boiled peanuts. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see the YouTube clip. Comedian roast this. <laughs> Comedian roast. Heckler roast over, roasted peanuts. Roast, yeah. roast <laughs> over boiled <laughs> peanuts. Roast, <laughs> roast heckler over boiled peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd is baked. <laughs> If y'all were a uh, if y'all were a cop, like what type what, what level y'all want to work? Yeah, you'll be yeah. a dirty cop if you dead just in the sea. I fucking would eat my never. revolver. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never be a fucking cop. When I was younger, I remember thinking uh, like detectives seem very cool because you're like TV only shows, dealing. Maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, and you're only dealing with uh, with like murders, you know, as opposed to like jaywalking or whatever bullshit you have to do as a beat cop. But uh, yeah, the detective thing, yeah, and th and they are glorified. But I think they are typically like, they're typically like focused on, you know, they're they're not worried about numbers, about like, you know, quotas. writing enough quotas. Yeah, uh, I think there's a little more to detective work and there and a little more passion. And and you have to be smarter, else you're probably not going to get that promotion. You know, you're just going to get transferred around or whatever and yeah just look like a cop hidden yeah. yeah and then you don't get that that promotion but being on the other side in movies like this whether it's like this or blow or whatever it always looks so much more fun oh for sure yeah i mean like being a dirty cop or whatever i feel like that'd be so stressful and then <laughs> if you do end up going to prison they just like ruin you because you're a cop you have to be in protective custody the whole time you're in there like you're sitting there with like child molesters or you're getting used like a fucking fleshlight you know, like <laughs> it, 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 there's nothing that entices me. And then, like, you know, I also don't want to just protect capital for the wealthy <laughs> people who own this country. Yeah, it's funny how there, th y there's so many older movies and shows where cops are like bungle, you know, just bumbling and like <laughs> falling over their fat guts, you know. Yeah. And then there, there's the Law and Order. Law and Orders, and yeah, just so so many shows and movies Benson that Stabler. make them. Yeah, I mean, Detective uh, Munch. I'm the guy doing. I love the Law job. and Order. The guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, forgot, I just messed that yeah. up. Yeah, like yeah, The Wire. Same thing. It's like you watch that, and you're like, I don't want to. No, police work is pointless. No. So much. Was so, just politics. And I've also read way too much, like Emma Goldman and Howard Zinn, to ever want to be a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> What's your? Do you have a favorite part in this movie? I think that my favorite part is actually the line you just said about who am I? I'm the guy doing say. my fucking job. <laughs> yeah, who the fuck are you? Oh, yeah. yeah. You must be the other guy. You I must be the other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is That's a good that line. is great. Oh, uh, also, there's a, there's a part where like Alec Baldwin's just like goofing on camera. You can tell that he's just having fun. I mean, I think my favorite part of this movie is Alec Baldwin. Which is not a very good answer, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's a slam dunk. I mean, fucking Nicholson wearing sunglasses at night in this Chinese arms deal—it's ridiculous. And ridiculous, and that Good crazy hat. hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we always do the the. It's you know that gif too of him smiling and nodding, oh, all blown. Anger to hell. management. <laughs> No, it's this. It's oh, this. it's this. Okay. He's, when he's all coked. I think it's in the montage when he's. <laughs> he just does that a lot, I think. <laughs> we do that to each other a lot. I've got a black. Just yeah. out. It was anger management. <laughs> you know, he does it in, in the that bar. Too. Like, oh, yeah. Like, when he like, walks over to uh, the girl, the Boston girl or yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Another Boston movie. <laughs> yeah, anger management. Way better Boston movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Deeds. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably the goat of Boston films. <laughs> Either pitch. Um, so Van Morrison's cover of uh, Comfortably Numb in this is horrible. That's my only criticism, I think. Huh. I feel like he blew the budget on the Rolling Stones. Uh, <laughs> it's just not... You know, uh, you're a music man, too. Comfortably Numb. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I... Uh, I don't disparage it in the same way. I think it's okay. When he's used Gimme Shelter in... Oh my this is God. the third time he's used it. He used yeah. it in Goodfellas and Casino. Yep. Yeah. And then it starts out in this one as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that he, he just like he bought the rights to that one song accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> when you purchase money's a song worth. on iTunes, you're yeah. like, I'm just gonna use it because I already <laughs> bought it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm saving one ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh it, it holds up, man. It's just a banger.
But also for the viewer or listener, the movie's on. <laughs> I don't know. If <laughs> it's on in the background. You can't hear it because it's muted. But that's why we're like reminiscing about it as we watch it quietly. <laughs> we're all just deeply gazing. Into yeah. <laughs> into <this. laughs> that's why there was that half hour where none of us spoke. Yeah. <laughs> and also Maybe like cut that dudes, out. <laughs> they're objectively like hot dudes. You know, it's like you have Damon and you have Leo. And Leo is like. You know, he was my favorite actor until Robert Pattinson started fucking killing it. But uh, and my wife puts this <laughs> on like when I she'll come home and be like, I want to watch Departed. I'm like, I'm going to take a shower because <laughs> I know what's about to happen. <laughs> You're going to get all worked up. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like a lot. <laughs> when did Robert Pattinson get you? Was that Good Time? Uh, so Good Time is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Love that movie. That was the movie that I watched and I was like, oh, I think I get movies. I think I've seen enough movies now to understand why this is so good. Fuck me. The Safdie brothers are the greatest. I saw Uncut Gems in theaters like three or four times. I would take people Ooh, to that. Yeah, like, you were you got you to gotta come see this movie. I think you told me I had to go. Yeah. Megan and I went and watched it in the theater. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so fucking good. Good time, I think I thought was better. I don't know. Like more. It's more enjoyable. I think yeah, it's more of it's like stressful a. It's stressful too. It, it's but an action movie. It's fun. Yeah. But like Sandler and Uncut Gems. No, incredible. What the fuck? Incredible. Where the fuck did that come from? I know. No, it was very uh, impressive. Yeah. I mean, he was great in Punch Drunk Love. He was, but that was kind of like Uncut a fluke, Gems I thought. And then he comes out in Uncut Gems, and it's like, oh, he's he should. this is best actor easily. He should win every award, <laughs> which I think they <laughs> fucked him on. I don't think he even got nominated. No, I don't think he did. Yeah, they had to give it to like Hamilton 2, Judgment Day, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they had to get it, give it to that guy with no head. <laughs> yeah. Stirring performance uh -huh. as a garbage can. <laughs> I heard you talking about sports betting recently and just oh, like God. Patrick Mahomes. And yeah. As someone that's placed wagers, how does that parlay that it's like from the tip when it's like they've got to win the tip? Oh sure, yeah. That whole parlay, yeah. I am. It's wild. As a gambler, it's <laughs> it's really the most on the edge of my seat. I am even when he gets he shot says, in the head, I'm like more relieved. <laughs> than yeah. like, I'm like, oh, the parlay's over at yeah. least. <laughs> He's yeah. He said that that was like the scariest. Uh, he says something about how that was the one that, the part of it that he was most worried about because there's coin flip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You throw that ball in the air, how, yeah. hit, like oh my god. And also, just, it comes down to like the ref throwing it correctly you know yeah if the ref like leans it left or right accidentally like it totally throws it off uh, we had a situation recently with the whole mahomes uh in the not last week but the week before where he like hurt his ankle in like the f like the second drive yeah and we i sent him a bet and i was like can you place this because i wasn't in a gambling state and he, we, i had him over rushing yards and i think the rest of it hit no, it didn't. Oh, thank God. There was something else. So I remember I was in. Oh, it was. I was, uh, I was in Milwaukee, and I was like watching that game, and I was like, his ankles hurt. I don't Fuck. think. I don't think Trevor Fuck. Lawrence got the over on passing yards. Oh, Kelsey yeah. scored, and the Chiefs won the first half. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it sucked when he when he went into the locker room. I was like, shit. Even if he comes back, he's probably he's not, not going to fucking ball. scramble. Yeah. yeah. And then last week his over was nine and a half. I took it. I was like, he's going to get this. He got eight. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Burrow ran for, like, 40 yards. His was at 23. I, 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 ugh. Tough wow. week. I love the NFL. Yeah. I love football so much. Unapologetically. I don't give a shit whatever you want to say about football. But, God damn, it's sports gambling. I'm so glad it's not year-round because I would oh, definitely yeah. be broke, dude. <laughs> it's, it's, such, yeah. it's such a problem for me. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling. Yeah. As you're wearing a hat, this is sports. <laughs> Norm loved gambling, That's too. Him, man. <laughs> he did, yeah. yeah. It wasn't the blood cancer. <laughs> and, like, my lifetime is very skewed. Like, my lifetime wins and losses because I'll get hit up by people who aren't in legal gambling states. And, they'll, like, for a while I was placing bets for Shane Gillis, and he would bet a lot of money. And my dad does my taxes, and when he looked at my gambling, like, losses, he was like, buddy, what's going on here? Are you okay? Like, what the hell is this? And I had to be like, no, no, these are for this person and that person and all this. But, god damn, it's not good. Yeah. It's or one good. one thing that I did like is when you see the wins versus losses, I've won quite a bit of money. And then nice. you give it back. Yeah, you give it right back. But it's not like I'm just losing every bet and so I'm down. My deposit to win ratio is very skewed. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not good. Yeah. But again, it's not a lot of money, but it is like twenty five here, fifty here. Oh, I'm gonna win it all back in the late game, a hundred bucks, and you're down like two hundred dollars for a Sunday. 
Then Monday comes around, and you're like, well, that was I can a lot get of this fun. back. I can get this back. Monday Night Football. I'll just put whole 200 on, like, you know, the Bucks minus three, and then, you know, Brady should be shot and put down. I'm so <laughs> glad he fucking quit. That last game was brutal to watch. It was tough. Him limping into the fucking winning the NFC South. It's all rigged. Barry Foster <laughs> said it was this week. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I wonder if he was even fucking that around or like not. That was scripted, though. Yeah, and also I think he was just like, you know, it was a shoot. He was yeah, goofing. Yeah, this is a podcast. Yeah. Like everything I've said on here about sports gambling, it's all a lie. <laughs> 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 I don't doubt my self-control at all. Sam, I saw, uh, is Running a Light, is it getting made into a movie? Yeah, uh, Garth Ennis, who wrote um, The Boys and Preacher. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, he wrote the screenplay. We love so The Boys. The yeah. Boys is sick, dude. That's just great in- entertainment. So, yeah, he wrote a screenplay, and hopefully, um, yeah, this year, someone will... We sent it off to some people who were, like, very legitimate in Hollywood. Danny, De- Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito is going to play. <laughs> what if he, dire- he should direct it. Yeah. That'd be sick. That's why I wanted to ask if you have, like, a dream cast. Or who yeah, you? John C. Riley. He oh. would be, he'd be the guy. Oh, oh man. Gosh. In my head, he's the guy. Because um, also, he did, like, stand-up when he would tour with uh, Tim and Eric. Like, he did live comedy on stage. And he looks like the guy, and he can put on some weight. And, yeah, I think he's my dream cast for Billy Ray Schaefer. He did the audio book of Cuckoo's Nest, or One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, yeah, Nest. he did. Incredible. Yeah. He did Whoa. a great job in that. And I always like Laurie Metcalf playing his wife. I think Laurie Metcalf is, like, severely underrated. The sister from Roseanne. The one oh, who, yeah, got, the yeah, one who yeah. got nine Emmys well, is severely <laughs> underrated. <laughs> well, Emmys, it's TV, bud. Who cares? But I'm saying she was <laughs> lauded. You were just She was eight. lauded in, yeah, I was a boy. You're just looking at your penis being like, what's this for? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where's this going to go? While she was killing it. She was amazing, <laughs> yeah. She I has think. a bunch of these, I'll tell you that. <laughs> she got a lot, a lot of basketball trophies in, <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> yeah. She also, got, I think she, she got, I, I don't know if she won an Oscar for Lady Bird. She, she, I think she got nominated. I don't know if yeah, she, she won great, Golden Lady Globe Bird. or She was also amazing Oscar. in Horace and Pete. There's that whole episode that's just her doing a monologue, and it's like, one of the best bits of acting ever captured on film. Yeah, so I think she'd be cool. Little unknown up and coming actor named Laurie Metcalf <laughs> that Sam discovered. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry I bashed your dog. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let it go. Uh, that's gone. I'm just making fun of you. Okay, you good. said she's underrated, Feel free to which make I fun think of is me, funny. But if you're mad at me, <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I love you very much. Great. <laughs> oh good oh good this guy wants a piece of my ass too i'm gonna jerk you off on the train yeah that'd be a fun crime <laughs> <laughs> sodomy law in alabama <laughs> <laughs> i know a guy that could get us off <laughs> yeah i know a guy that can get me off <laughs> me come me. on <laughs> <laughs> so that's why i got toured again <laughs> yeah that, that would never <laughs> that would suck <laughs> <laughs> that's me you're the one that's like curious and i always shut it down couldn't be less curious <laughs> <laughs> I, I know how that movie ends <laughs> our wives pissed <laughs> it would be so gross <laughs> it'd be worse <laughs> me and you yeah Ugh. it would suck uh, I mean, I get, I get wanting to bang dudes. There's a lot of hot dudes. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you, you have your choice yeah. of men to lead singer of the Strokes. Whoa. Oh, we saw Bob. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> totally he just, wouldn't give that. He guy has like no charisma. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a lot of women I've had crushes on. <laughs> 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 I like, I like the andro- androgynous. Real soft features. No, mm. very <laughs> angular, hard features, and like callow face and like gray ashen skin. God, give me that. <laughs> I did that riff about borderline personality disorder last night, and that was fun. About Duolingo, like duo having borderline. borderline. Oh yes, yeah, about him being stalking you. Yeah. The issue with the movie is that Norm died, <laughs> and he has a very prominent role in the book as Norm Macdonald. So like that's going to be the biggest gap in casting. CGI. Yeah. I'll wear I'll wear the green suit like Andy Circus. And I'll be Norm, and you can just digitally add him yeah. over my body. But you're yeah. going to do the Smeagol voice? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying the motion capture. The great <laughs> <laughs> you, have add, you have to add like eight inches. <laughs> Give me the microphone. <laughs> Lund obviously can play Lund. I can play him. I, I'll play Kevin. <laughs> Wayfish rail of a man, Nathan Lund. But yeah, I think John C. Riley would be very cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who else. He's just big. He has to be imposing, you know. John Goodman. Michael Madsen, John I guess. Goodman John Goodman and Laurie Metcalf together again. too old, though. Too old? Yeah, he's yeah. gotten. He's like, his face is all sagged out. Old. Yeah. 
I don't see the joy, Michael Madsen. He would. I could see all the pain. Yeah, there's not a lot of joy in that. Yeah, guy. he's he's a fucking yeah. broken dude. He, it's it's a very bleak novel. You can get it at samtalent.com. Well, I did want to say <laughs> when we we're talking good times, like seriously, re- listening to the audio book was just stressing me out. Like when he's going through just his whole life, yeah, and like I don't just having his own panic attack. I started to kind of feel like. Oh my god! Just that same safety brother feeling. Uh. Well, that's very that's very flattering to be compared at all to their work. It is funny when people come up after the show and they're like, ah, and they like, you know, I have their card and I swipe it and I sign the book and then they're like, I've been looking for something funny to read. <laughs> this I, I need a couple laughs. That guy said bought a book for his mom last night and yeah. said that she had to put her dog down, mm-hmm. and so he was excited to give her something fun to read. And I almost was like, don't. <laughs> don't let her read it give yeah. her a month because that was that hilarious was so like s- that was ridiculous he's like yeah your mom died you know and uh today my mom um had to put her dog down <laughs> 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 <Right. laughs> shut up we're all going through it yeah man everything is everything brother <laughs> we gotta take care of each other <laughs> that was fucking ludicrous <laughs> nice guy bought two books thank you thank you trip one thing that uh, I heard you interview and talk about your book and someone comparing it to like not being as Disney fied is like crashing mm-hmm. and just your response. I was so refreshing. Cause I like, I kind of hate Pete Holmes. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so just whatever you were just talking about, just your book being just not that and just yeah. being raw. I was like, Oh, I like this guy a lot. Cause usually people are just more, just more like, Oh no, everything's great. Like they don't want to talk bad about, uh, anything or I, mean, anything. I watched crashing but it was totally not based on any my legitimate experience as a comedian he like goes and he hosts some like shitty one-nighter for Artie lang and they give him 500 bucks to mc and it's like that's never happened because <laughs> that money came from yeah. the club if Artie would have peeled him off 500 bucks and been like here you go like ari shafir did you know it's like that would could probably happen but the club being like you forgot your check and it's like you know a life-changing sum for him like that's never ever happened for some fucking one-nighter in poughkeepsie so there was just a lot of it lacked a lot of verisimilitude that drove me crazy as a guy who's been doing stand up forever. It was well, yeah, I, th- I I remember thinking it felt like it was condensed, like you could have some of those things happen over your first 10 years in mm-hmm. comedy. But he had those things happening to him like every other day. Right. And then like for uh, like new co- uh, new comics can often be given good advice by an established comic or a, a gig or whatever. But he's like crashing on people's couches like Sarah Silverman's like, yeah, come stay with me or whatever. <laughs> stay in my mansion. What he's are like you an talking open about? Yeah, yeah, right. It would have been a lot, <laughs> lot better if Artie Lang killed him at the end of the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you should, like, fing- Pete Holmes should have woken up to Artie Lang like fingering his asshole. And yeah. Like, uh, sorry. Here's a-. And then he peels him off yeah, the- yeah. another 500. Throws it on his nude body. <laughs> Yeah, Artie should have got him like stuck on fucking heroin or something. Like that would have been a legitimate experience. <laughs> or just, yeah, he should have just been told to fuck off by everybody that he came across instead yeah. of or ignored. You know, right. <laughs> just, just people just walking right that, by. That was him. my favorite part of the show. Everyone making fun of him and mm-hmm. just the seller being in that world. Yep, but, and then yeah. when it would go to his wife stuff, I'd be like, I'm fast forwarding this. Also, he's <laughs> at the fucking table at the comedy cellar after like doing one. Sh- it was it was completely bullshit. I think it was like you know. Pete Holmes being like, this is what could have happened if people didn't think I was a giant freak. <laughs> <laughs> he was very nice to me in Montreal. He hosted the shows. Well, just whenever you said all that, I just remember, just, I was like, I like this guy now. Uh, it got me past the bull peanut comment. <laughs> 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 and even in your defense, man, even when we were watching that show, you were just like, ah, God, if I just, if there was none of this Pete Holmes relationship yeah. bullshit in this show, I could kind of deal with oh, it. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I love also he has the budweiser at the golf course that's just such a (laughs) classic like upper class trash move can of beer budweiser in the middle of the day i like that (laughs) and he's just gripping it and ripping it oh yeah the way he swings too it's all belly he's all red oh yeah he's just constantly red (laughs) (laughs) withdrawing yeah Yeah. (laughs) i don't care if he shot that woman (laughs) <laughs> he's a fucking national treasure his episode of comedians and coffee getting comedy or whatever is really good it's really good i have to check that out yeah well i think we're about out of time here so we need to we need to wrap it up get, all right get you out of here thank you for thank you for everything thank you for y'all's time do you have anything you want to promote real quick our podcast chubby behemoth yep yeah please check it out it's yeah. uh, a lot of fun i think we do a good job 
we do it's just we're just being funny on there i want to commend you guys for how good a job you guys did this was great i thought this i mean if people ask you to do their podcast on the road and usually it's terrible and this was the opposite experience i had a blast yeah so well, thank, thank you, you very much yeah thanks for hanging out with yeah. us we appreciate Sorry you i called joining. you cooper manning earlier it's okay <laughs> <All right. laughs> i'm still more mad about the bullet feet us <laughs> <laughs> well they're a crime against your mouth <laughs> Hey everyone, it's me, regionally acknowledged comedian Sam Talent. And I'm his opener, Nathan Lund. And you're watching the Movie Ruiners, Birmingham, Alabama's number one podcast hosted by brothers. <laughs> but not the brothers you're re- typically <laughs> thinking of <laughs> here in Birmingham. <laughs> Perfect, that was great. <laughs> you guys just have a babe back there? What the fuck was that? That's my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you see that lady? <laughs> oh, yeah. Made me do this. <laughs> I'm glad we were still yeah, we're, 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 we're keeping that part. I've got a black.